Hello, hi everyone. We will talk about forensics today. <laughs> so, um, my name is Jose Ayrton. I'm a data scientist at Duratex. Duratex is one of the biggest Brazilian industries, mainly working on uh, the fabrication of wood panels, metalware, ceramics, etc. And well, um, I'm also a co-organizer, community manager at AI Brazil. Uh, we have many members of AI Brazil here today. Thank you. Um, I'm also a teacher at FIAP, at our Artificial Intelligence MBA. And today I will talk a little um, about my uh, master thesis uh, work. Uh, it's entitled A Methodology for Gender Expression and Classification, GENAC. And, well, my advisor was Dr. Leandro Nunes de Castro, one of the greatest scientists, uh, Brazilian scientists working in machine learning right now. And my co-advisor was Dr. Rodrigo Passi. And he was at the uh, Renato Archer Center, and we were working mainly with military and with the federal police in Brazil. So uh, it's mainly uh, uh, used for investigation and so on. But I will try to give you examples of another uses of this methodology. Um, and well, that's my agenda for today. Uh, I will give a little introduction, uh, a brief introduction about the subject. It's a little complicated subject, I know, but I think everyone will enjoy it very much. Uh, then I will have my theoretical references. I will talk about the methodology, how I came up with this idea, and then our performance evaluation. So, um, for our introduction, um, we, we all know that we are having a paradigm shift uh, nowadays. Um, we are coming from Web 1.0, and Web 1.0, we're usually, um, we're usually, uh, 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 we're usually, uh, <laughs> um, uh, we're, there's usually one vector of news, of information, uh, a journal, a TV, etc. Uh, but nowadays, we're giving the power to the people, literally. So people can share, can uh, really m make it uh, collaborative. So information is not uh, one to many, it's many to many right now. So in this case, we have uh, our motivation that's the, the automatic user characterization problem. And why so, Ayrton? And uh, well, Think about uh, anonymity, think about social media, think about fake news, Facebook, um, Twitter, etc. You, uh, you will always have someone that is faking it, that is faking to be you, that is faking to be a famous person. Um, what can we do about it? What, what can we really do about it? So, um, uh, I'm proposing a lot of meta attributes, a lot of characteristics that we can read. Um, only by text. Uh, there are a lot of other researchers that are uh, reading images, reading background information, etc. But hey, if I'm talking about anonymity, if I'm talking about military applications and uh, federal police applications, I'm talking about someone who isn't typing very much, who is a little bit sketchy. Yeah, of course, they're trying to flood the police. So I'm talking about uh, anonymous persons who, are, who aren't tweeting uh, too much. And well, I have a sparse uh, kind of text. Né? I have a uh, little text to work on. And well, what can I do about it? So I, I will have um, many attributes, uh, like 160 attributes that I will be reading um, from text. And my main goal is to discover if this person is of male gender expression or female gender expression. So, what about gender expression, Ethan? What is gender expression? Well, um, first of all, I love text, I love poetry, and, and I love psychology. So, this, this research is all based in psychology. Uh, mainly on the guidelines of the American Psychology Association. And APA, uh, they, APA, uh, they uh, um, say that gender expression is how you communicate your gender 
uh, in a given culture. So in Brazilian culture, mainly uh, people communicate their gender by their talk, by when they're speaking, or when their mannerism is, or the way they dress, the way they're, 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 they use fashion. So my current architecture was mainly um, collecting tweets using PuiPy. Uh, it's an API, a very famous API um, using Python. And then I have a database of tweets um, just to give a, a, a little bit of spicy to, the, to, this, to this research. I use it mainly non-gender uh, um, tweets. So, for example, the tweets of journalists, the, tweeters, the, the tweets of um, news, news feeds broadcasters and politicians, because they don't uh, usually use gender on this, on, on this kind of tweet. Um, because, of course, in Portuguese, we, ha we have uh, some words that give gender. For example, uh, ele foi, ela foi, etc. But they, uh, we have other uh, languages that just don't give any cues about gender. So um, how can I be generalistic about it? Uh, think forensics, OK? So um, I have my preprocessing. Uh, I'm mainly talking here about part of speech tagging and tokenizing my text, of course. I have to work with little parts of the text, so literally my words. Um, then I have the meta attributes extraction. I will, uh, if I have the time, I will give a demo about it. Um, then I have my meta attribute selection, so I'm always feeding new meta attributes. Uh, I'm always um, recurring this meta attribute somehow. Then I have my classification. Here we use it SVM, we use it knife base, we use it uh, decision trees, forward decision trees, etc. cetera. Um, uh, you can, uh, of course, uh, I will share my meta attributes class. You can use whatever, um, whatever algorithm you want to. Uh, and then we have a result, if male or female. Um, so basically my preprocessing, as I told so, is my tokenization. Um, I, give, uh, I give a dictionary and I say, okay, those are the words in Portuguese. Uh, this is a verb, this is an adverb, this is an adnomino, adjunction, uh, etc. And then I have, uh, of course, my part of speech and tagging that says that so. Um, I use it MacMorfo. MacMorfo is a dictionary based on articles from Folha de São Paulo. Um, so in 1994, uh, a researcher said, okay, I will tokenize all the words in Portuguese. Yeah, it's a little bit crazy, right? Uh, remember, he did it manually. Okay, so we keep on using this because it's a very difficult task. And then we have this. So I have adjectives, adverbs, subordinative, uh, sub connective adverbs, uh, subordinative uh, uh, articles, current currency symbols, etc. Um, every one of them is uh, 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 treated as a an, an meta attribute. So I have an example of tweet here. Um, William Bonner was very famous uh, uh, on Twitter at the time. So we have, como dizem meus sobrinhos de Twitter, rimos litros, embora eu não entenda como se possa medir o volume espacial de risos, mas tudo bem. So, um, as my nephew said in Twitter, we left liters, uh, although I don't know how we can measure the volume, uh, uh, the, the special volume of laughter, but it's all right. So um, we have here uh, our part of speech tagging in action. So we have, for example, our verbs, we have our adverbial pronouns, uh, we have prepositions, and of course, we have something that cannot be classified. For example, the, uh, the names of enterprises, the names of algorithms, etc. cetera. Um, but you see that it works quite well. So, those are my meta attributes. Yes, 128 meta attributes, all um, programmed one by one in Python. So I have uh, 16 meta attributes uh, involving characters and syntax. Basically, uh, the total number of characters, the total number of characters divided by the total number of digits, etc. Uh, I have 28 meta attributes based on words. Uh, they're mainly um, uh, vocabulary richness measures, 
Uh, this is from an area um, called uh, text, uh, text authorship attribution. That's a, a very famous area on an NLP. Um, I, I won't be talking about much of that um, if you want, so I have a class about it, okay? Um, uh, text structure, so basically uh, I'm working with um, uh, the number of question marks, the number of uh, commas, etc. cetera. Um, morphology or, or, or how people organize their, their, their text. And that's mainly uh, what you, you see that we, we, most, uh, um, we most distance each other uh, when using uh, both um, uh, text structure and morphology. And then uh, we have also psycholinguistic cues. I had to go there and do some dictionaries in Python. So I have emotional dictionaries, for example, um, Portuguese positive words, posit uh, negative words, neutral words. I have um, emoticons, uh, emojis. I have uh, positive emoticons, negative emoticons, uh, neutral emoticons. I have some cognitive markers. For example, uh, there are some psychology studies that say that um, women tend to use more a word than other. Uh, men tend to be more specific when they talk in social media, etc. So it's all in there. And, well, uh, so I have this tweet, and then I have a large vector, uh, as you already know from word to vec or working with images. So I have, for example, the number of characters here is uh, 134. I have um, uh, uh, letter cases and, uh, and so on. I have the number of digits, the number of white spaces, etc. And well, what's my problem? Well, my problem is to classify a tweet um, given this, 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 this large amount of data and I have to classify them in male or female using the, the given number of meta attributes. So um, basically the output of my model will be if there is female, if this is um, a, a male tweet. Remember, I'm using gender expression, so uh, there's no uh, transgender gender expression. Uh, so, uh, I, uh, first of all, I used, I um, um, uh, think so, two, almost 200,000 tweets from 60 um, profiles. And uh, we also investigated the relevance of this um, tweet, this, this meta attributes using key squared and my information gain. Um, we also used um, four machine learning algorithms. Um, they were, uh, uh, unfortunately, I cannot uh, share them because they're already been used um, by the federal police. Um, we used uh, functional trees, best first trees, knife base, and support vector machines mainly. Uh, I tested other algorithms. If someone wants to, to know about it, uh, I can talk about it later. And well, those are my results. Uh, remember, please, that those are uh, Twitter tweets that don't give gender specific cues. So it's pretty uh, amazing that we achieve this, this, this kind of, of rate of accuracy. So for example, um, using a tweet by tweet metric, uh, so I, 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 I use it a, a vector for each tweet. Uh, so uh, I end up with 3,000 male tweets, 3,000 uh, female tweets. And then we have uh, a precision uh, using, for example, knife base um, uh, of 61% and SVM 68% of accuracy. And then you see that when we concatenate this or we, we uh, take uh, every tweet from this person and we concatenate that with only one text. So we have a one text for each person. And then you can see that our accuracy um, exponentially grows uh, with this kind of information. Because of course, uh, if, you, if you have one big text from someone, you can give uh, some, some little context about it. Um, the, the, the algorithms can learn more about it. And then we had 80% uh, of accuracy. Um, 
of course, there was using uh, k-fold 10, 10, 10 fold validation, so it's pretty, pretty gnarly, this, this kind of result. And then, um, using more tweets, uh, they're using uh, my psychological linguistic cues, because that, that was the problem that we were facing. Um, uh, if we use psychology, what will change? Actually, the results were a little bit worse. And so uh, we have a tendency to drop down the accuracy if we have too many psychological, so-called linguistic cues being used. And well, um, Ayrton, what were the most significant um, attributes? Uh, well, it was pretty, pretty good. Actually, we, we saw that um, uh, textual structure is uh, pretty significant for this, this kind of, of problem. Uh, the number of words, uh, so uh, uh, meta attributes based on the number of words, etc., were pretty uh, good for our accuracy. And uh, you can see also when we use more tweets, we tend to uh, uh, have other meta attributes being more important. And so, for example, we had um, psychological um, cues um, being more important with more tweets. So basically, um, one of the conclusions that we could make is that psychological cues are more suited when you have more information about this person. And well, it was kind of expected because I can only imagine uh, that uh, is a really hard work for a uh, uh, someone from psychology to really understand and to really make a profile of someone uh, with little data. So of course, with uh, much more data, I can be much more specific about psycholinguistic cues. And well, uh, also we tried to do it um, each meta attribute set um, uh, each time. So for example, uh, we tested only character and syntax meta attributes, only psychological cues meta attributes, only textual morphology uh, attributes, and then we saw that, well, uh, they don't usually um, work very well alone. They go well when they're um, uh, they're used um, all, all, all they're used all, all the set in. And well, our conclusions are that support vector machines are very good when you have large data sets, but um, the police is more focusing on using decision trees. It was already used on Olympics. Uh, I don't know the details about busts or anything, uh, if people were really in jail um, because of that, but I believe that it worked very well. We didn't have any complaints. Uh, and well, where it can be used, uh, 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 not only for forensics, but for example, there at Duratex, we're using it for targeting recommendation tools. So we have a deep uh, recommendation tools, uh, also done by myself. Um, uh, we're using it in email marketing too. So any contact, any given contact um, based on anonymity can be now traced, it can be now uh, really profiled, and the, uh, of course the construction of user profiles based on anonymous data. And well, this work is entirely dedicated to my, to my brother that passed away, um, an adventurer who with his simplicity taught me to respect the nature of things. Uh, let us respect each other just as the surfer learned to respect the sea, the wave, the infinite in each other. And now I will give a demo. I have some time? Okay. So, 
when I said that we use it all the words in, in Portuguese, I was really serious about it. So um, I pretty much had to read dictionaries for almost five months of my life. <laughs> So that's basically our um, psychological linguistic cues. So we have a uh, number of positive words, number of negative words, and we have also uh, other properties, for example, um, textual morphology ones, the, the reason between the number of prepositions and total of words. Um, we have the, the, uh, the median of, of words used by uh, a person. And uh, an entropy measure, of course, to to share our uh, gain of information, um, the total of characters, the number of uh, of words, and so on. And those are my dictionaries. <laughs> and well, let's go one more time to the presentation. Always trolling me. So you can have access to this work and many more on my GitHub. My complete thesis is on a research gate and slide share. Um, share a like if you can, please. And that's all, folks. Thank <laughs> you.